So my first prediction for 22 and tech is actually a really positive one. And that's that the right and interest of children and other vulnerable and minority groups will be front and center in the global design of technology. This has been a really important area for me personally. I've got two very young children who use technology every day. And in the UK, through the Age Appropriate Design Code and the advocacy of Baroness Kidron, we've seen some fantastic work in this space. And if we're being honest, big tech companies perhaps historically haven't done enough, but now they're starting really to focus on this area and do some fantastic work. So what does this mean? It means less collection of data in relation to young people, thinking about their rights first when designing this technology, so fewer nudges, uh, more pausing between content, designed to create less of those kind of tech, tech tantrums that I see with my young children. And ultimately, this will mean that we have better technology. As parents, we can trust it more. And it's important to know that this isn't just a UK theme now. This is going global. We saw with the Instagram papers, particularly in the space of, of social media and mental health, that uh, social media can have very harmful impacts on teenage girls in particular, uh, pro provoking kind of suicidal thoughts, uh, which was hugely distressing to read. And again, big tech is taking this very seriously. There's gonna be huge amounts of progress in the next 12 months. And for me as a parent, that's a great thing. And I think tech companies are really aware that they have to step up now and they're gonna do that. So my second prediction for 22 is that this is the year that we're gonna see an end to the global internet, the thing that we've all grown up with. This is gonna be the year of the splinternet. And of course, when we talk about this, the localization of data, technology sovereignty, countries putting up barriers, reduction of the free flow of information around the world. We often think about China, and it's true that China is now a much harder uh, country to do business in. And we've seen in the last year that Yahoo and LinkedIn have found it so tough that they've pulled out, particularly in the areas of, of cybersecurity and of data use. But it's really important to lift the narrative away from China. This isn't just a China issue. And the OECD has done some really interesting research in this space. They found that data sovereignty, pulling up those drawbridges, is actually something that's going on in 40 different countries around the world. Whether that's in Australia in relation to health records or in Finland in relation to national security data, we're seeing countries retrench and what does this mean? It means that for you and I, fewer access to services, a shrinking of markets, but actually for the digital poor, those people who have no access to the internet, the speed of change, the growth of the internet will be slowed because the market is shrinking and retrenching. So it's bad for the consumer, it's bad for business because it's gonna cost more, and it's bad for the digital poor. So I'm not happy about this, but this year is a year that we're going to see an end to the global internet. And that can, that's not a good thing. It can only be a bad thing. So my third and final prediction for tech and 22 is that AI is going to go mainstream. And when we look at this area, I think people more generally in society and business think that this is somehow in the future, but it's absolutely not. 86% of CEOs now say that AI is being used day to day in their business. And this is a really positive thing. So it drives efficiency, productivity, and profitability. And we've seen some fascinating use cases, whether that's in the area of cybersecurity, uh, product and quality control, supply chain management. So let's focus on the positive uh, aspects of this. But of course, there are downsides too. And with more AI use, we're gonna see more AI horror stories, whether that's uh, women being offered worse credit than men, or AI being used to mark exams and the AI algorithm going wrong, as we saw in the UK with the A-level results. So we know that there's gonna be more horror stories and how do companies prepare for this? Well, there's new laws coming into play. The AI Act in Europe is one of the boldest pieces of legislation we've ever seen, backed up by 6% of global turnover fines if you get it wrong. So you need to start to identify where your AI is, is it explainable? Is it transparent? Uh, if it goes wrong, 
Can you switch it off? Have you got this worked into your audit program? These are all questions that regulators are going to be asking you really soon. And they're all things that you can get a grip of now. So AI is here, it's here to stay. And there's a wave of new legislation coming globally for you to get your arms around.